rise and worship this, our Lord, the Triune God, on this last evening of 2021. We are going to use evening prayer, the alternate beginning. We're on page 54. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. Be our light and scatter the darkness. And hear our evening prayer. They are like new grass of the morning. 
Though in the morning it springs up new, by evening it is dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins, in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. The length of our days is seventy years, or eighty, if we have the strength. Yet their span is but trouble and sorrow. For they quickly pass and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger? For your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. Teach us to know our days are right, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, O Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love. That we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen trouble. May your peace be shown to your servants, your splendor to their children. May the favor of the Lord our God rest upon us, establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's the work of our hands. We pray. Gathered here in your house on this last day of 2021, we use this opportunity tonight to praise and thank you for your many blessings with which you have graciously showered upon us in this past year. We especially highlight the blessing of Jesus' blood-bought forgiveness, which was new every morning to us these past 12 months. We trust that this daily cleansing of all of our sins will continue solely thanks to your never-ending grace and mercy. We humbly pray that your forgiveness will continue to motivate us in our lives as we daily work to exalt you, O Savior and Lord. Accept our prayers and our praises tonight. Guide and bless us, preserve and protect us for another year as we live to your glory. In our Savior Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Scripture lessons for tonight are the traditional New, Year, New Year's Eve lessons. Our first one from the Old Testament is Isaiah 51, verses 1 through 16. A uh, few more verses than the usual Old Testament reference on New Year's Eve. I expanded it a bit. We may think that the Lord has spoken enough words of comfort to the prophet Isaiah to his people and to us. However, the Lord knows how slow of heart we are to believe, especially even us who seek the Lord, even those who he calls my people and who know righteousness. Therefore, in this chapter, the Lord again pleads for faith in his power to redeem. Three times in the verses of our reading, you will hear the Lord calling them and us to really, really, really perk up your ears and listen to it. Verses 1, 4, and 7. There's a fourth time, not a part of a reading, verse 21. He makes the invitation attractive by variations on the theme, as will be pointed out in the ninth sermon. Every single one of us can use more listening to the Lord's word in our lives. May that be a pleasant change for every one of us in our lives of 2022. Turn our attention. Chapter 51, verses 1 through 16. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness and who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were cut, and to the quarry from which you were hewn. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who gave you birth. When I called him, he was but one. And I blessed him and made him many. The Lord will surely comfort Zion and will look with compassion on all her ruins. He will make her deserts like Eden, her wastelands like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the sound of singing. Listen to me, my people, 
Hear me, my nation. The law will go out from me. My justice will become a light to the nations. My righteousness draws near speedily. My salvation is on the way. And my arm will bring justice to the nations. The islands will look to me and wait in hope for my arm. Look up your eyes to the heavens. Look at the earth beneath. The heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment. And its inhabitants die like flies. But my salvation will last forever. My righteousness will never fail. Hear me, you who know what is right. You people who have my law in your hearts. Do not fear the reproach of men or be terrified by their insults. For the moth will eat them up like a garment. The worm will devour them like wool. But my righteousness will last forever. My salvation through all generations. Awake! Awake! Clothe yourself with strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake as in days gone by, as in generations of old. Was it not you who cut Rahab to pieces, who pierced that monster through? Was it not you who dried up the sea, the waters of the great deep, who made a road in the depths of the sea, so that the redeemed might cross over? The ransom of the Lord will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them. And sorrow and sighing will flee away. I, even I, am he who comforts you. Who are you that fear mortal men, the sons of men, who are but grass? That you forget the Lord your Maker, who stretched out the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth? That you live in constant terror every day because of the wrath of the oppressor who is bent on destruction? For where is the wrath of the oppressor? The cowering prisoners will soon be set free. They will not die in their dungeon, nor will they lack bread. For I am the Lord your God, who churns up the sea so that its waves roar. The Lord Almighty is his name. I have put my words in your mouth and covered you with the shadow of my hand. I who set the heavens in place, who laid the foundations of the earth, and who say to Zion, you are my people. Here ends Isaiah's proclamation. We continue with the epistle for this evening from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 22 through 25. Here the Apostle Peter reminds us tonight of how important God's word has been in our lives up until now. The Holy Spirit is the one who gave us spiritual new life in Christ by means of the word of God that is living and enduring. Even though everything else, including us, will fail and die, the word of our Lord will endure forever. God's changeless will and word are constant in our ever-changing life and world. The law is always going to condemn sinners. The gospel will always work to produce faith and hope through Christ or to harden the impenitent and unbelieving even more. This passage is the motto of the Book of Concord. It needs to be your motto and resolve, not just for 2022, but for your entire life. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply from the heart, for you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. Grass withers, the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord stands forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. Here ends our second lesson. Our third reading is recorded in Luke chapter 13, verses 6 through 9, the traditional gospel lesson for New Year's Eve. Jesus here warns his audience, then and now, that they needed to begin producing works consistent 
with the gospel. While there still is time granted to repent and trust in him. Today, too, many fail to live their lives according to what our Lord wants and wills. And he wants everyone to come to repentance, come to the knowledge of the truth, and then produce fruit in keeping with that repentance and wisdom. The one who commands us to do such works gives people what they need to do as well by giving them his spirit, his motive, power, and ability to run his good news. He enables us to repent and to produce the fruit that flow from his salvation. Lord, show up each of us the shortness of our time and the nearness of eternity so that none of us fail to redeem the time of grace that you have given to us and the privilege that we have. Verses 6 through 9 of Luke 13. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree, and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, Leave it alone for one more year, and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. Here ends our third lesson. We continue our worship this evening with Hymn 467, May the Mind of Christ Our Savior.
What are the words from Moses? Psalm 90, 90, verse 12. The word of our Lord for this evening's meditation, last time for 2021. Recorded in Luke chapter 12, verses 30 through 31. You have those words printed for you in the middle of the second page of your bulletin. For the pagan world runs after all such things, and your father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Thus far. In the name of a benevolent Savior God, whose mercy kindness, compassion, grace, and that list could go on and on of his benevolence to you and me, has been faithful to us in every single day of this year. And the hope that it gives us is that he's going to continue that faithfulness next year as well. Your fellow believers, what would you think would be the most popular top 10 New Year's resolutions that people make at this time of year? I actually compiled a list. I, I got five of them on my list, but then I decided to check to see what other people were doing. And so I, I found secular writer Brad Zomitz's list, and this is based on surveys. He compiled the top 10 most popular New Year's resolutions. I would have you know that all five of the ones that I compiled are somewhere found in his top 10. These are his top 10 New Year's resolutions that most people make these days. Number one, exercise more. Number two, in association with number one, Lose weight. Number three, get organized. Number four, learn a new skill or hobby. Number five, live life to the fullest. Number six, save more money, spend less money. Number seven, quit smoking. Number eight, spend more time with family and friends. Number nine, travel more. Number 10, read more. Perhaps some of the resolutions that you had thought about that you were going to make actually were some of those that I just mentioned. And I know that as I was thinking about this this afternoon, I know there are, are quite a few other ones that, that didn't make that list. But what do each of those suggestions, those resolutions in the top 10, have in common with one another. Yes, every single one of them are resolutions that supposedly are going to help a person have a healthier, happier, better life than, than if they weren't doing these things. And I'm going to emphasize that's exactly right, but the emphasis that I'm going to put on these that they all have in common is that they all have to do with this life. My emphasis, the here and the now. What in the world do any of those resolutions in the top 10 have to do with the next life, the better life? Life eternal. What resolutions are you going to make for this new year? I know some of you make some, and some of you don't even bother. But in the word of our Lord for this evening, I think Jesus gives us a, some pretty good advice that you and I could use as the best resolution, not just for a new year, but for every single day of our lives. As you and I take a look at the passage that both Matthew and Luke recorded from Jesus, let's take a primary focus off of what we usually do this life and put it where it should be. Put it where our resolve needs to be resolved. Where it needs to be is 
on the spiritual and the eternal. One care and concern that is prevalent among every single one of us, and, and it's a, a natural instinct, I think, something that we're born with, we can't help it, is that you and I give a lot of concern and care to what our body and our life is going to have so that we can survive. Getting necessary creature comforts actually occupies our mind more than you and I would think, perhaps even subconsciously. And I know it's what we pray for when we pray the Lord's Prayer. But one, petition for physical blessings. Give us this day our daily bread. It's what we go to bed at night to get our rest for so that we're going to have energy to get up in the morning and go to work. Yeah, it's, it's what we do every day to get the basic needs for our body and life, and not just for ours, but also for our families as well. Yes, Jesus knew how much care and concern goes on in your mind and your heart to make hay while the sun shines. And this is the reason why he said what he did here in verse 22. These are his words. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. In other words, this is what we could call Jesus, don't worry, be happy, piece of advice. And he follows up that don't worry with reason why we don't have to worry. He goes on to talk about the birds of the air and the plants of the field and how neither of them are concerned or have care about what they're going to eat or wear. And he told his disciples, that's what you need to be doing. In fact, he went on to say, oh, you a little faith. And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. That's not what believers should be spending their time of grace here on this earth doing. In fact, Jesus says, that's what unbelievers do. He said, verse 30, for the pagan world runs after all these things. So, what ought you and me as believers be spending our time on instead? Well, Luke tells us here. He said, but seek his kingdom. Jesus told us that instead of running after creature comforts of this life, that you and I need to be more interested in pursuing, running after, seeking soul comforts for the next life. Yes, Matthew's parable passage, one that you probably know better than even Luke's passage here, he said in Matthew 6.33, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And Matthew's the one that puts the priority on pursuing spiritual things ahead of the temporal and the earthly things. Yes, both Matthew and Luke are telling you and me to pursue, to seek, to run after, to focus on what is more important to you and to me. To focus and pursue on what keeps your faith alive. And what you and I need to have the status to be in a right relationship with our Lord. And that's righteousness, isn't it? But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And you and I need nothing, nothing more than his righteousness, don't we? That's, that's what we need more than anything in the world. And we need that perfection. Jesus' righteousness. More than we need clothes and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wives and cattle. And the list goes on of daily bread blessings. Without Jesus' righteousness and that status of being in a right relationship with our Lord, yes, you and I have no peace. You and I have faith that is futile and worthless. And you and I will never, ever get to go to heaven. You know, what, you know what the neat thing is? In spite of who you and I are, Jesus came into this world anyway. God loved us so much that he was willing to send his son to do that very thing that you and I couldn't do. To earn righteousness that you and I need so, so, so importantly. 
Yeah, so vital. You and I need his righteousness. And that's exactly what Jesus did for us, didn't he? He lived in your shoes and mine, fulfilling expectations, the demands of his heavenly father, not for himself, but for you and for me. So that you and I could have perfect righteousness. The righteousness that you and I call his robe of righteousness. And we got it, isn't it? He provided that righteousness full and free, simply by faith. The faith that the Holy Spirit has given to us. And it's without any input of ours at all. We have the greatest treasure that you and I need, his righteousness. that gives us the status of being 100% in a right relationship with our Lord. You and I didn't do anything to get it. No input whatsoever. Yet, that's not how we keep it, is it? You see, in order to keep that status of righteousness, you and I need to carry on faith-born, sanctified, sanctified repentance and, and cooperation with the Spirit. We need to do what we need to do to keep faith going, to keep faith alive. Because when you keep faith alive, then you keep possessing that status of righteousness. And that keeping faith alive, keeping that status of righteousness, is the most important thing that you and I can ever do. Even ahead of food and drink, house and home, land and cattle, and again, as I said before, the list of all those daily bread blessings that we call daily bread. But seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness is really the easy part of, of Jesus' advice to us in this passage. You see, Jesus tells us also this, and your father knows that you need them, but seek his kingdom and these things will be given to you as well. You know the hard part of resolving to do what Jesus tells us to do here in this new year or any time? You know what the hard part is? Not just pursuing the spiritual and the eternal more than the earthly and the temporal, but it is actually trusting, trusting, having the faith in the Lord that when you and I do follow Jesus' word and his will to pursue the spiritual and the eternal ahead of the temporal and the earthly, that we're going to get our daily bread blessings. Yes, trusting in the Lord that he's going to keep his promise to give us what we need, even though we're focusing on, on the spiritual and the eternal. Let's summarize what we've heard so far, just so that we know what we can take home with us. Jesus gives us the advice, advice that you and I would use as a resolve for every day of our life, to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. You and I can do that because we know, first of all, number one, that seeking spiritual blessings and the eternal treasures that he gives to us is the more important pursuit that you and I have, even ahead of, of the physical and the temporal. And number two, you and I can do that, resolve to do what Jesus does, because you and I do trust. You and I have been given the faith to trust that when you and I do pursue spiritual blessings, that he's going to keep his promise and bless us with physical and temporal blessings as well. So, with that in mind, what is going to be your top ten resolution for 2022? I don't think that any of us have a problem with what Jesus was talking about here, about worrying. Worrying. I think our problem is priority, isn't it? This is the reason why at the top of, of all of our lists for what we need to do in this new year, as it has been in the past year, needs to be humble, contrition, and repentance. For all the times when we have put this life ahead of Jesus and the spiritual and the eternal things and blessings that he has won and done for you and for me. Yes, Forgive us, Lord, for shallow commitment, for spotty thankfulness in our thinking and living. Yes, we've demonstrated that so much in our day-to-day -day living this past year. And then, when you and I do trust that the Lord will forgive 
us, as he has in the past. He, he is a, a, a merciful and gracious God who forgives and forgives and keeps on forgiving, even after the cows have come home. He keeps on forgiving when you and I know that we've been forgiven for our waywardness and for our unrighteousness and for our failures. Then you and I can use that forgiveness where it needs to be used in our life. Life of sanctification in a narrow sense. He has to motivate, to enable, and empower us to actually show the change that you and I have said and resolved is in our heart. What change am I talking about? I'm talking about using our time of grace more, more wisely, more faithfully. And how can we do that? By spending more time on the spiritual and the eternal rather than on the earthly and the temporal. How can you and I do that? We're going to hear a couple of suggestions in a moment that I would really, really think should become your 2022 resolution, even if you don't make resolutions. The first thing that you and I need to do is, in 2022, more than we have in 2021, is put more attention on input of the word of our Lord each and every week. Every single one of us has 168 hours a week. Every one of us has the same amount of time. Nobody has more time or less time than, than any one of us. But you and I need to use more of that time that you and I have been given, a time of grace, for more input of the Word. Because every single one of us would have to admit that we don't spend very much time of that 160 hours in God's Word every week. Just think how many hours you spent this past week. I would, I would uh, uh, grant you that this week probably you have more time spent in the Word than, than in normal weeks because after all, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, last week you were here, tonight, Friday, and then Sunday again. Some of you were here on Monday. And yet, that's only some, right? This is not a normal week. The normal week, how much, how much time do you spend in God's Word? I think you're getting my drift. That's the reason why you and I need to resolve to have more input of God's Word in our life. This is going to enable you and me to focus on the spiritual, the eternal, more than the here and the now, the temporal and the earthly, which is what we are normally doing. How can we do that? Like I said, I've got a couple of suggestions. This is my first one. <coughs> my first one is Sunday mornings. When you and I come to the worship and we hear the meditation on a verse or verses of God's Word, I would ask that you work harder at taking that home with you. Taking that home with you and then and then using it as a new devotion for yourself every single day of the following week. So you take the passage from the sermon on Sunday, and you use it for your devotion on Monday. You use the same passage on Tuesday, and you use it on Wednesday, you use it on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And Sunday you get a new one, right? But along with that passage, you take the appropriation and the application that was dispensed and disseminated to you in the service. I'm not saying that, that you're not going to come up with better appropriation and or application when you really put your thinking cap on and you ponder these verses for five days, six days in a row. You're going to come up with some wonderful application and appropriation, even better than I give you on Sunday morning. And that's the blessing, isn't it? But, you can't do that. You can't do that unless you take notes. You can't do that if you sit like a bump of the log, not knowing where this is from, taking notes, sermon summaries like our kids and catechism, because if you don't take notes, it goes in one ear and out the other when you go out the door. It is simple as that. And if you do take anything at all, it's not going to be much at all. 
You certainly aren't going to be motivated to do it on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So, take the word home with you. Use it as a devotion, a new devotion, an additional devotion. Perhaps maybe at midday. Maybe a devotion in the evening. Maybe in the morning. But make it a, a new devotion, along with all the other devotions. And then you'll have more input of the Lord in your, in your life. That's how you can pursue the spiritual and the eternal, ahead of reading the magazine or the newspaper or listening to the radio TV. Second suggestion, in order for more input in the Word every single day of your life, and I know I'm preaching to the choir here. Most of you are members of the choir that I'm talking about. For more input of the Word in your life, you need, you need to be in front of the Word. Why not this year in 2022 make yourself available to one of our Bible classes, our Bible studies. I know the ones that don't attend Bible class, you have every excuse in the world, but they are not, not reasons, they're not legitimate. They are absolutely illegitimate and not worthy. Spend some time in Bible class. You'd be surprised at how your faith is going to grow and how you can become, for once, a person full of the Spirit and wisdom. Yes, our worship is not designed for Bible study. And if you think you're studying the Bible here in worship, man, I've got land to sell you that doesn't exist. Yes, you're, you're, you're getting the, the wool pulled over your eyes. You're not studying God's Word at all. And if you're not willing, if you're not willing to make yourself available where you're going to get some good, downright, blessed fellowship around the Word of God, if you're not willing to do that, then at the very least, get your own personal Bible study, do it at home. That is at least better than nothing. That's contact and input with your Lord's Word. That's what you need to do before, before you can pursue and run after and seek Christ's kingdom and his righteousness. And of course, when you've increased your input of, of God's word in your life, and there are many other ways that you can do that as well, then naturally what is going to come is your desire to put out. Your desire for more output. Yes, the word goes in, and ministry and service to your church and to your community and to your neighbor comes out. Yes, that is, that is the natural thing that happens. When the word comes in, your desire to serve others. And don't wait for people to ask you to serve because it's never going to happen. Just do it. Use what you think to be your talents and abilities and gifts and resources and just do something because that's what the Lord has redeemed you for. That's why you're still here in this world and living, evidently, in a new year, 2022. Yeah, these resolves of input and output take time, sacrifice, yes, hard work, energy, you name it, not easy. But that's exactly what the Lord has given to us. He's given to us all of those blessings. Plus, He's given to you and me the time of grace to put these things into practice, to put His advice into practice. And evidently, He's giving you and me more time to do it. Because He's given you another year to enter into tonight. So let's use more of that time of grace pursuing spiritual and eternal blessings rather than Pursuing temporal and earthly blessings. May the Holy Spirit enable us to take Jesus up on his challenge. Yes, this is that challenge. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, as well as to trust his promise. And all these things will be given to you as well. Amen. In the place of the song of Mary, let's sing him 439.
we arise for tonight's prayer of the church. For your information, I'm going to use a very old prayer that is from the ancient Lutheran liturgy book. And uh, so please excuse me for the King Jamesy type of language if you if it does make it out. But this is a prayer from from uh, your parents and grandparents uh, generation. But it still has what we need to tell our Lord this evening. O oh Lord, heaven and, of heaven and earth, the author of life and preserver of our entire being, we give you most humble and hearty thanks for your goodness and mercy, which have followed us all our days, and especially do we praise you for your manifold blessings during the year, now drawing to a close. You have granted us life and, and favor, blessed the work of our hands, given us meat in due season, crowned our year with your goodness and blessing. You have defended our country from war and bloodshed, from plague and famine, not necessarily a pandemic, and from other calamities. Thou hast guarded our homes and sheltered us under the shadow of thy, thy wings. You have preserved your church among us and kept us from falling away blessing us with all, every spiritual blessing through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Heavenly Father, what are we that you should be so mindful of us and so gracious to us? Our evil and misdeeds testify against us. Our sins are all naked, open to you, and none can tell but you how many and how great they are. Therefore, we again humble ourselves before you, confessing and lamenting all that we have done wrong. Pardon and blot out all of our offenses, our ingratitude, our apathy and indifference to your gracious word, our unbelief and disobediences, our unlovingness and thought, word, and deed. Cleanse us from our sins. Let them all be buried with the closing year to rise up against us no more forever. For the sake of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Keep us ever mindful, O God, as the years of our life pass away, that we are strangers and pilgrims on this earth, and that the end of all things is at hand. Teach every one of us what it means to number our days and to redeem our time of grace that remains. Let us, therefore, with the old year, put off the old man, which is corrupt, according to the deceitful lust within us, and let us put on the new man, which after you is created in righteousness and true holiness, make each of us sober and watchful unto prayer. Let us continually walk in the fear and help us to keep the faith. Let us give to you the best of our days and not weary ourselves with the things that are but vanity, the here and the now. May we always be ready with our loins girded about and our lights burning for your coming. And when our flesh and our heart fail us, be thou our strength and our portion forever. Hear us for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue on page 61 with the song of sin. Your 
The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.